Hi, I'm Agatha. And just like that, this before. The paper on the back mentioned that this is a pre-release version for testers. Which is nice, since I'm one of the first people to see it. There's a link to the website, a link to the store. GitHub. Yeah, the project is moving along to even have a public GitHub now. There's a fork of the preserve firmware there that's specifically adapted to this board. And the development is ongoing. Also, some contacts and a telegram channel. Don't worry, I'll type it out for you. It's hard to read, especially with me touching it with wet hands. So, the info paper mentions some limitations, which the release version is supposedly free from. Most of this have to do with the power subsystem, which is kinda expected since uh, it's a different battery and a different BMS. Also, this acrylic cover is just a demo, but I don't care about that. A rechargeable 2032 is about 40 milliamp hours. I wonder how much Kiso would normally live off of that. Looking at V3 and V4 side by side, we can see some differences. The copper specs are now covered with varnish at the back and the antenna winding changed. There seem to be less coils and the traces themselves are thicker. The most apparent change is the battery and the, the buttons swapping places. The board is now a lot less awkward to hold and even though the buttons remain the same, I think I like this placement much more. The adapted firmware also makes the device turn on much faster now. It takes just a second and you already have the menu and can do whatever. This feels much closer to how flipper boots. Also no annoying lack of factory keys message. In addition to the back button being in the wrong place on the Kisu, I also couldn't get the board to reboot using left and back like the flipper does. To be honest, if we had pads on the right side, I would just desolder the button and move it to its proper place. But alas. Anyways, now that we have a properly tuned antenna, let's test the things we couldn't test before, namely NFC and RFID. I've got a couple NFC cards here. And they work. Yeah, it seems to be reading everything just fine. Uh, let's try another one. Yeah, pretty fast, just as expected. Now, I don't think I have an RFID card on hand. But we'll ask Flipper for help. I mean, Flipper can emulate one. Uh, stop choosing them, just, just anyone would do. Would it work from the top? No, don't think so. But yeah, it works this way. Which is actually great news since a card sized kiss would be perfect to replace cards. And I think I'm mostly using flipper to flip around the cards. Another thing we can test is U2F, which wasn't working before and still not working now. Oh well. Here's a close up of my finger and my biggest pain and pain being quite literal physical discomfort are the buttons. I've been touching the buttons for some time and well allow me to demonstrate. So just to any scale whiskey on it. 16 wait 16 grams that's 
that's 16 grams all right okay so to press the button I need to push down it and it just registers when it reaches around 600 grams yeah maybe maybe 550 to 600 grams in comparison the actual flipper about 300 to 50 to 300 this is like half of the effort I need to do to register the button and just just uh, for completeness comparison's sake here's a Nintendo switch controller do you see it uh, just over a hundred just over a hundred less than a hundred fifty and it works it registers the button well done I tried solving the painful buttons on a v3 with silicone and it kind of works at least hurts less but doesn't look great yeah on the v4 though we have these two little holes and maybe just maybe we'll get some kind of proper buttons in the release version i can only hope since i mean my dam dam receiving damage each time you use a device is not nice it's uh, it's not supposed to hurt oh and uh while you're here looking at my finger, let's take a look at another thing. Kisa's website is actually getting a lot of updates right now. It now has this greenish hue, hacker-esque, some info about the interfaces, which are mostly the same except for these two things, which are apparently soldered on. Also, you can add uh, another sensor, but no idea where to put it and um, no real guides as of yet. And uh, of course, here are the links to the, the GitHub repo with firmware and fork of Flipper Zero which is forked from dev, which is nice. Yep. Also, what do we have here? What is this? No, 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 no. Hardware, hardware. It looks like there is a case and some other stuff. A, an, a ring, an 8-bit ring. No prints. Hmm. Looks like they're doing something with the branding. But what is this? Uh, I don't like it. I think it it might even hurt more. But oh well. We can wait and see. So yeah. Yeah, you can definitely go check it out. And I don't know. Take a look at the shipping price. It's usually the boards are not that expensive, but they're shipped by some terrible company, which wants a lot of money for shipping. That happened to me with the flipper. Hey, 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 hey. Okay then, good luck, have fun, bye bye.